Hello everybody and welcome. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about how to choose the right settings for night photography. A lot of you guys that are watching this video might be new to night photography. Maybe you shoot photos during the day in automatic mode, but you are gonna to need to use manual for night photography. If you've already used manual mode a little bit, then perfect, you are in the right place. And if you haven't, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about a few of the manual settings that you wanna dial in for your night photography. So obviously at night, it is really dark and you may have seen night photos before where you feel like you can see a lot more in the photo than you could actually see with your eye. And this is because we can use certain settings on the camera to let in more light and allow the camera to see more light than our human eye is able to see by using longer exposures. Now there's multiple different settings on the camera that matter as well as the gear you're using. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the gear you should be going for when shooting night photography. First things first, you probably want to get a pretty nice DSLR or mirrorless camera. Usually the more expensive the camera is, this usually correlates to a little bit better sensor for night photography, although this is not always true. I love using my Sony a7R 4 and a7R 2 for night photography, and I know a lot of the high-end Canon and Nikon cameras also work great for night photography. You just want something with a sensor that performs really well in low light situations. Now for lenses, you're gonna want a wide angle lens and you're gonna want one that has quite a wide open aperture. So something around f2.8, f1.4, 1.8, anything around there. Something in the f4 range isn't really wide open enough to shoot night photography with. You technically still could, but you're gonna get better results the wider the aperture goes, meaning the lower the number of the aperture is. That's gonna give you much better results on your night photography for images with lower noise or grain. And of course, since we are shooting longer exposures, you are going to need a really sturdy tripod. I've got a couple other videos reviewing a few of my favorite tripods. I'll link that here. You guys can check that out uh, because you will want a very sturdy tripod to shoot long exposures to shoot night photos. Now, when we're shooting night photos, there's of course three different camera settings, all of which affect the amount of light the camera lets into the sensor. So the first thing is the shutter speed, the second thing is the aperture, and the third thing is the ISO. The rest of this video is gonna be covering these three things, and I'm gonna show you guys how to choose the right aperture, shutter speed, and ISO for your night photography. So the first thing that I wanna mention, and we'll come back to this a little bit later, is the ISO. Now the ISO is essentially just adding artificial brightness to the scene. So the higher the ISO, the more grain or noise you're gonna have in your image. So ideally we keep this ISO as low as possible, especially if you're running a lower end camera that doesn't have quite as good of a sensor because you are gonna experience really, really severe noise. And of course there are things in post-processing you can do to reduce this, but we wanna get the nicest image we can in, in the field um, and not have to do as much editing to the image. So in order to keep that ISO as low as possible, we want to use the most wide open aperture we can to let in the most amount of light and use the longest shutter speed we can to also let in the most amount of light. Now the things that we have to worry about with the shutter speed are the stars moving because I could leave this, the shutter speed open for three, four, five minutes and uh, adjust my other settings accordingly. That's gonna let in a ton of light, but the problem is because of the rotation of the earth, the stars appear to be moving in your frame and we do not want moving stars in our night images. If you do wanna shoot a star trail, this is not the video for you. There is tons of other videos covering those techniques. So to get those stars tack sharp, we wanna use a technique called the rule of 500. Essentially what this rule states is that you're gonna go 500 divided by your focal length, which is why you want a really wide angle lens. And the uh, whatever that equals is going to be your shutter speed. So let's take an example here and say that you had a 14 millimeter lens. If you took 500 and divided that by 14, it would equal roughly 35, meaning that your shutter speed could be about 35 seconds. If you had an 18 millimeter lens, your shutter speed could be about 27 seconds. You can see how the further out our focal length gets, uh, the less and less we can use the shutter speed as a tactic to let in more light. The shutter speed's gonna have to keep getting shorter the further out the focal length we go. For example, if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter, you can only use a 10 second long shutter speed before you're gonna experience really bad star trails. Now, for those of you that might be planning on printing your image, I recommend using the rule of 400, which is the same thing as rule of 500, just using 400 instead. This means that your shutter speed is gonna be just a little bit shorter, but that's gonna help you to not have any star trails at all, even once you print it and you're looking at the image up close because we don't want those stars to be streaking at all. So now once you've figured out your shutter speed, then you're gonna dial in your aperture. Now, in most cases, it's gonna be best to open up that aperture as much as you can, 2.8, 1.8, 1.4, whatever your 
lens allows you to open it up to, open it up all the way. However, if you are using a little bit cheaper of a lens, you may find a lot of issues when you have the aperture open all the way. There might be some trailing in the corners, some darkness in the corners. There's a lot of different issues that can happen, especially in the corners of your frame when you do this. So if you go out and you find really poor results at that wide open aperture, go ahead and bring it up a couple of clicks. That's one of the reasons why I really like having a 1.8 aperture lens because I can actually open it up to 2.4, 2.5 or so and allow a lot better results to come in uh, even on a high-end lens. Now with your shutter speed open uh, as much as you can for your focal length and your aperture open all the way, then you'll be able to dial in the ISO. Remember earlier when I said that the higher the ISO, the more noise or grain. So the thing about the ISO is that we are gonna wanna dial it in. Usually I like to start at about 6400 regardless of my aperture and shutter speed settings. I like to take a couple photos uh, with all three of those settings dialed in and then I like to see if it's too bright, if it's too dark, and then I'll change things from there. Usually at that point it will hopefully be too bright and you'll be able to bump down the ISO one or two clicks to maybe 4,000 or 3,200, this will get you a much cleaner final image. So you wanna balance these three settings uh, in order to properly expose the night sky. So if this is your first time shooting the night sky, I really recommend writing down some of the things you learned in this video or adding it as a note in your phone and then going out into the field with the settings already in mind that you're gonna shoot with. Of course, there's other things you have to keep in mind like getting the focus right, finding the right location and other things like that. But hopefully this helps you guys in order to find out how to get the perfect settings for your night photos so that your stars aren't trailing but you have enough light in the frame. If you guys have any questions about this video, please feel free to let me know down in the comments. As always, I really appreciate hearing what you guys think of the video as well as your like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.